The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning. It is 5 a.m. on this Wednesday morning. I'm Alex Fisher alongside Chris Burton, Maddie Jansen enjoying spring break. The five hour standoff in Northeast Bakersfield ended just after midnight with a suspect being taken into custody. We're not going away. We need your exit the front door of the residence with nothing in your hands or your hands raised. Right. Again, we're not going away. You want to resolve this situation peacefully no. without anybody getting hurt. This was the scene last night as Bakersfield police officers and the SWAT surrounded, home, the, surrounded the home and to get the suspect to come out. A man believed to be armed with a gun was holed up inside the home on Loma Linda Drive, just south of Thelma Drive. It started as a domestic violence call. According to police, a neighbor witnessed the suspect assaulting a woman outside the home. When the neighbor confronted the man, she says he pointed a gun at her and then went inside the home. Police say the suspect eventually surrendered. An 11 year old child was inside the home at the time of the standoff and was not hurt and is now safe. No further information is available as of news time. From our 17 follow up file this morning, the sister of a man arrested after a recent standoff with BPD is public th publicly thanking the officers for their handling of her brother's capture. Alexander Fuentes was taken into custody after a nine hour standoff on Thursday. Police say Fuentes threatened officers with a pellet gun, sword and knife after starting fires in a home. Danielle White says her brother suffered from schizophrenia and BPD officials, including a therapist, had been checking up on him for months before Thursday's incident. They really took the time to speak to me and speak to my father and to make sure that we knew that they were doing all they could to approach him carefully so that they didn't harm him. Police say one officer was hurt during the standoff, struck in the head by a pellet from the pellet gun. No one else, including Fuentes, was harmed. Fuentes has pleaded not guilty to nine felony charges. His next hearing set for May 9th. Meantime, a man charged with four felonies in connection to the March 10th standoff on Nord Avenue, but who was released four days later after posting bond, is believed to have died. David McGowan was scheduled for a hearing yesterday where an attorney would take over his case from the public defender's office. Judge David Zulfa, however, said he had received information that McGowan has most likely passed away. Authorities say McGowan allegedly poured superglue and leather dye on his girlfriend and threatened to douse her in gasoline and then set her on fire. In your 17 crime watch this morning, a call to check on the welfare of a Bakersfield man has now turned into a homicide investigation. Officers went to an apartment on Nordic Drive in southwest Bakersfield just after 1.30 p.m. yesterday and discovered the man dead inside the unit. BPD says the circumstances of the man's death were suspicious and warranted a homicide investigation. The identity of the man has not yet been released and there is no suspect information at this time. Anyone with information is urged to call BPD at 327-7111. A suspected killer is on the loose this morning and police say they need your help finding him. Police are still trying to find 25-year-old Kira Burton II. Officials say Burton shot and killed another man back in March at the intersection of California Avenue and P Street. Police say he was last seen driving a black 2012 Acura TL. Burton is considered armed and dangerous and should not be approached. Newly released video shows the moments leading up to a deadly officer involved shooting in Boron. The coroner's office says 41 year old Michael Ramos Jr. was killed early in the morning of March 4th on Nugent Street just north of Highway 58. Deputies were called to that same location the night before after receiving calls about a man shooting a BB gun at trailers and car windows. When deputies arrived, they found Ramos armed with a bow and arrow. A standoff ensued until Ramos finally came out around 5 a.m. armed with several weapons. Video released yesterday shows Ramos pleading with deputies to shoot him. And we should warn you, some viewers may find this video disturbing. Don't do that. Uh, Michael, do not pick that gun up. Don't do that. 
Five KCSO deputies were placed on routine administrative leave following the shooting. Use of force in this case was determined by KCSO to be within department policy. Making news around the state this morning and a new, a new development in the deadly shooting in downtown Sacramento. 27-year-old Matula Payton has been identified as an additional suspect behind the gunfire that killed six people. Police say he was among the five shooters involved in a street gang gunfight on April 3rd. Payton is now wanted on several felony warrants and police are asking for the public's help to find him. A nine-year-old girl was shot and wounded in Victorville last night when a gunman opened fire at the Victor Valley Mall. This is a picture of Ava Rose, which is not there right now. Family says she was shot multiple times in the arm and was airlifted to Loma Linda Medical Center, where she had been stabilized with a broken arm. This is her. Frightened shoppers ran for cover as the shots rang out and police placed the area on lockdown. Others hid inside stores while police searched for the shooter. A search does continue this morning for the gunman. A tragedy in Buena Park where a 17-year-old girl was hit and killed trying to rescue her cat from a busy roadway. Surveillance video shows the teen walk into the street with her mother after spotting her cat laying in the roadway. And that's when the tragedy strikes and a van runs into right into the girl. The driver of the van stayed on the scene and cooperated with authorities. The entire community is shaken. I ran out and I saw the girl thrown right there and the mother screaming, Lila, Lila, wake up, wake up. And, um, you know, there was no movement. Residents in the area say it's a very dangerous intersection without a crosswalk. They say another woman was hit crossing the same street about two weeks ago. Fire destroyed this hotel under construction last night in Camarillo. Heavy flames could be seen from the 101 freeway, disrupting traffic on both the north and southbound lanes. And for a time, the entire freeway was shut down. The fire broke out just after 7.15 near the Las Posas exit and burned quickly through the wooden structure. The hotel was being built near the Camarillo Outlet Mall. It's unclear how the fire began, but the structure is a total loss, as you can see there. For the first time, President Biden is accusing Russia of genocide in Ukraine. Biden had shied away from the word for weeks, and it's not clear what the new designation will mean, but it was welcomed by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The Pentagon is keeping a steady flow of weapons into Ukraine, but now looking into more options. Meantime, Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy traveled to Romania to meet with government officials and U.S. forces there. This is the House Minority Leader's second stop in his trip to Europe amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. McCarthy is leading a delegation of seven House Republicans and two House Democrats. Over the weekend, the group was in Poland meeting with the Polish Prime Minister and other top officials as well as Ukrainian refugees. In Romania, McCarthy and his colleagues met with U.S. Marines and troops stationed there. On Twitter, McCarthy said, quote, Romania has done a great job increasing its contribution to NATO and is a strong partner in helping Ukrainians in their time of need. Bakersfield Assemblyman Rudy Salas is part of a delegation of state lawmakers now in Iceland, of all places, and it's for a good reason. The group is spending the week studying how Iceland is finding ways to decarbonize the atmosphere and lower emissions in its economy. The goal? is to bring back ideas that could be used here in California. Lawmakers are not using any taxpayers, uh, taxpayer dollars for this trip. The California Foundation on the Environment and the Economy organized the trip. It's become clearer and clearer that the most urgent and, and dire threat to California, uh, to its economy, to its uh, livability, to its people, uh, is climate change. And so almost all of our trips and all of our conferences here in the state of California focus at least in part, if not almost entirely, on strategies and practices uh, for slowing uh, the damage inflicted by climate change. On Monday, the group visited Iceland's Orca plant. It sucks carbon out of the atmosphere and has it processed into liquid form to then be injected deep underground. Officials note California's geology has the potential for similar projects. Aside from studying solutions to cut down carbon, the group is also learning how Iceland has successfully advanced opportunities for women. The group of lawmakers will return to California on Saturday.
From our 17 follow-up file this morning, next month marks one year since 12-year-old Amaya Alexander was shot and killed in front of a family member's home in central Bakersfield, and still no arrests have been made. Family members say Alexander was walking outside to get some fresh air when she was killed. The shooting happened at a home on L and 11th Streets on May 21st. Bakersfield police say that there have been more than 36 killings in that neighborhood since 2017, and police say this shooting is believed to be gang related. The BPD is reminding the public of a $5,000 reward for information that could lead to the arrest of the killer. If you have information about this shooting, you can call Kern Secret Witness that number 322-4040. A former Kern County firefighter who pleaded no contest to child porn possession was sentenced yesterday to 16 months in prison. Sheriff's investigators last year received a report regarding uploaded files containing child pornography. Authorities said more than 600 illegal images and videos were later found on electronic devices seized at the workstation of Christopher Vega, as well as at his home in Santa Barbara County. Vega was arrested in December and resigned from the department. He was also ordered to register as a sex offender. Sherry Papini signed a plea deal in which she will plead guilty to counts of lying to a federal officer and mail fraud. In a statement, she expressed remorse. Prosecutors say her disappearance from her Shasta County home was not a kidnapping. Court documents say the mother of two instead stayed with an ex-boyfriend for two weeks. When she reappeared, she had bruising and burns on her body and a chain around her waist all fabricated to fake an abduction and torture. Prosecutors say she did it for attention. Happening tomorrow in Delano, city officials want to hear from you on how thousands of dollars from a federal grant that still has not been spent should be used for community development and improvements. Among the most pressing issues, potable water, street repairs, and abandoned buildings. It'll actually get the community input that, that we drastically need to know, okay, where exactly do we want these funds to go towards? The funds can be used for direct action to the community from construction of necessary facilities to uh, rehabbing current ones to even improving access to water and sewer facilities. The first meeting is taking place tomorrow at 530 at the Ellington Community Center. All are welcome and the Spanish speaking community is highly encouraged to attend. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.